Welcome back to Legends with Durka, where Yamato's little sister, the Musashi, has sailed into tier 8. Today, we're going to take a look at her and see how balanced she is at the lower tier and if she's worth bringing to your port. So without wasting any time, let's go check her out. This match is on Sea of Fortune, it's domination, and since there is a carrier in the match on the enemy team, I'm going to deploy kind of slow. I might sail towards a teammate, depending if the carrier focuses me or not. Why should I care? <laughs> Stay tuned, I'll show you. The newest campaign ship, Musashi. You could have her in five weeks if you spend 2,500 doubloons on Admiralty backing, which of course is the best value in the game. Musashi was a real ship and was launched essentially right after Yamato. She did not have much of a career spending most of her time hiding in port from US submarines. In the game, she brings Yamato's incredible firepower down to tier 8. So let's take a look and see what being one tier lower is going to cost you. Yamato has more health. Better anti-aircraft by miles. Way better main battery gun accuracy. And a little worse rudder shift, but otherwise these ships are basically identical. Musashi does have some extra 152mm guns, but they have a 12 second reload on an accuracy build, so you might as well forget about them. Looking at the ships and the guns that they have on their decks, you can see that the Yamato has way more anti-aircraft guns, and then you can see Musashi's extra 152s. Now, speaking of the accuracy and the accuracy build, that's most likely the way that you're going to want to set her up. We are using aiming systems, prop, concealment, and MBM3. My commander, Azerlane Fuso, but essentially Takagi and full accuracy. Now, right now in the game, we have some different options for inspirations when you're making uh, accuracy battleships. You could do a double Sigma build with Cunningham and Iachino, the newer Italian battleship commander, or you could use one Sigma commander and then use Azerlane Sharnhorse to buff the dispersion. What's the difference? Okay, let's do a quick refresher. We're going to use some information from the PC WoWs wiki. Now, dispersion is this ellipse where the shells are going to land. Sigma is shell grouping. That's how tightly at the center those shells will land together in the dispersion ellipse. So for almost every nation in the game, this dispersion ellipse gets bigger the farther away you're shooting, except for one. Japan. So one of the community managers confirmed Musashi has Japanese dispersion while the Yamato has American dispersion. So what does this mean? Well, at longer ranges, you're actually going to have better dispersion rolls than the Maine, the Montana, and the Yamato. Basically, after 10 kilometers, your Musashi could technically be outperforming Yamato, except, of course, for having that terrible Sigma or shell grouping. So with that said, I would probably use Iachino and Cunningham if you have them both at high enough levels. All right, that was super, super nerdy. <laughs> let's move on. How does she stack up to her peers? Well, let's take a peek. Health-wise, she's a healthy girl. 85,000 puts her near the top, just behind the Svetsky Suyas. Now, effective HP with her heals, she's in third place. Her armor is almost identical to Yamato, so most of you know what to expect. There's a very high citadel that can be hit from most angles. Uh, the most vulnerable spot is here on one of these front cheeks, and really the stern is also very susceptible to damage. The guns are pretty well protected though, that's a high point, some of the thickest armor in the game, and her torpedo protection is second to none, 55%. Musashi has 9 massive 18.1 inch guns and a 30 second base reload. Throw on the main battery mod 3 in slot 4 like we did, and it gets down to 26.4. And this is going to give her about the best damage output at tier 8. Republic, of course, will be the best here, especially if you use Megalomania on your French BB commanders. The guns, they're awesome. And the armor penetration is fantastic. You can punch through almost 600 millimeters of armor at 10 kilometers. I was surprised on this chart to see Azumo is actually a little better with the penetration at that range. So that was interesting. I haven't really played the Azuma yet much, but uh, yeah, we'll get there. Anyways, of course, the shell size means you can overmatch about anything in the game, making it easy to consistently deal damage with AP shells. 
I would basically never fire the high explosive shells unless you know you're going to have an opportunity to shoot a DD, like they're rushing you or uh, they're going to be spotted, someone's going to radar, yada, yada, yada. Musashi's turret traverse. It's terrible, so I absolutely would choose crisscross for your commander. The anti-aircraft, it's the worst at the tier. And it's the worst at tier 7. <laughs> With a 146 damage per second, it's really, really awful. It's just slightly worse than the Akazuki, if that puts things into perspective, which is a ship that is basically a fraction of the size of Musashi. So if there's a CV in the game, you're going to have to change how you're going to play the game. You basically need to rely on teammates. Look for ships with strong AA bubbles like American battleships, anti-aircraft cruisers, or something similar, and you're going to have to play smart. Otherwise, any CV could basically just strike you over and over and over again without any fear of repercussions or fear of really losing any planes. Finally, this is the slowest tier 8 battleship. 27 knots. So I definitely would not use gyrating drill bits or you're going to be painfully, painfully slow at, uh, you know, these higher tiers where you really need to be able to move around the map to accomplish things. Now, she does have a better turning circle than most of the other tier eight behemoths. So that is good. And finally, her concealment is average to bad for the tier. With the concealment module, I got mine to 13.8. So really quickly, let's see what's happening in this match. We have the points lead, mm -hmm. and we're about to have the cap lead, but we're down by two ships. This is going to be a photo finish. And with as many losses as I've been showing you guys lately, you might wonder if I'll squeak out the win. We'll see. So what's the verdict on this behemoth? I'm going to say super strong. This is a ship that a casual player could pick up and do very well in. It's so simple to play just like Yamato. Basically, point your nose at the enemy and keep firing, right? I mean, yeah, actually, <laughs> the ship rewards you for that kind of gameplay. Truth be told, she's pretty tanky, if you angle correctly. Of course, the weaknesses are going to be getting outflanked, giving up your broadsides and other Yamatos and Musashis. They're going to be your biggest threat. That and enemy aircraft carriers. Luckily, in this game, it was uh, implacable, which is, I guess, I would still say the worst tier 7 aircraft carrier. So I got lucky there. Torpedo bombers for CVs. Those are definitely going to be a big threat. The dive bombers, you have pretty strong citadel deck protection and a 57mm normal deck, so you're, you're well protected from that. And on that note, HE spammers are largely going to shatter on that 57mm deck. The accuracy being worse than Yamato, yes, that's something you're definitely going to notice. But keep leveling up your Iachino and your Cunningham, put them both in your inspiration slots, and you're going to do just fine in her, really. I didn't find myself completely disgusted by salvos like I have in some other unnamed ships. Uh, most of the time when I needed a shot to perform and do well, say against a DD or something like that, she did quite well. In the game in the background, we mostly tried to use island cover to protect us from taking fire from lots of different directions. And when played this way, biding your time, Musashi is fantastic. When the opportunity arises, there really is no reason not to push in the ship either. Of course, you have to remember you have horrible turret handling characteristics and, of course, the big citadel. But when done correctly and with the help of teammates, pushing is just fine. Now, most might say this is a sniping battleship, and sure, you can do that, but, and this may be controversial, I've never really liked this play style in World of Warships. I see it as having less of an impact on actually winning games. Uh, usually, you cannot effectively contest caps, you can't tank damage for your teams, you have a hard time shooting DDs if needed, and keeping cruisers at bay, yeah, you can do that from farther back, but you can also do it from up close and be more effective. Again, that's just my two cents. Now, I do think Musashi promotes bad battleship playstyle. Like mentioned above, this ship really does reward you for just playing bow in and simply shooting. Her large citadel that most players don't know how to protect, her slow speed, these are things that also promote that playstyle of just sitting there and not being aggressive. 
Again, pushing, I think it's all about timing and having a good team to support you. Pushing alone is rarely a good idea. It doesn't matter what ship you're in. But if you have a good supporting team, Musashi is a very, very scary adversary. 10 out of 10, I would recommend this ship. Is she better than the Republic? Well, that's hard to say. Republic is a fantastic battleship, and I would really need to test both ships out more, I would say. In ease of play, Musashi wins, but a better BB player could probably pull out more stops in the Republic. Overall, these two new Tier 8 premiums in the last couple campaigns have been fantastic, where the Tier 8 tech trees have been mostly blah. And with that, let's check back in on the game. Remember now, if you see CE, it stands for Collector's Edition, and it means that person got that ship in the original campaign. Expect to see this right now on Wichita, and in the near future summers, and the mines. Beyond that, who knows, Ochakov, JB, possibly. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Now, we're going to speed this up a little bit, but right here, I did... Oh, I'm trying to call our carrier over here to do some spotting for us. That way, I know where to turn these slow turrets and what I should do next. Now, I didn't want to push either one of these ships because I don't have to. Our team has the caps and the points, so I played cautiously, and uh, yeah, we're just going to back up here and hopefully shoot this Collector's Edition Wichita, and we're going to hope for a good dispersion roll. Because if I don't get a good dispersion roll, he very easily could kill me, but luckily we got him. Now, the Donskoy is also going to be coming around the corner here, so we'll try to turn a little bit to mitigate some damage i think he's shooting he and of course he is rewarded with a double fire hey that can happen on that note maybe the damage control party instead of prop eh, that could be useful i just really like that acceleration we'll take a shot here you can see a lot of the vertical dispersion up close with musashi it's uh it's trolly but we get the confederate and the game is over GG's to the red team and also to my division mate who had a fantastic game, of course. And uh, it was about 3,000 base for both of us. Let me know what you guys think of the Musashi in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and hit the like button. That would help me out a lot. Catch you guys in the next one. See ya.